My name is Gary Bredo, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail, so I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. The entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. In Walsh College's business launch entrepreneurial community, consultants provide advice to aspiring business starters. More information available online. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. American Express is proud to support startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. I'm on Russell Street in Detroit's Eastern Market, and this is where it all started for McClure's. From their grandmother's kitchen to global sales, McClure's is fast becoming a household name in pickles, Bloody Mary mix, and potato chips. Let's go find out how they took this family recipe and turn it into a family business. The food product market is extremely competitive, and there's an overwhelming volume of new products being submitted to American markets each month. Things like sustainability, price point, and a relatable story have become increasingly important for a new product's success. Joe and Bob McClure did their due diligence, spent time researching the market, and grew at a manageable pace. They made an educated decision to set aside their careers and chase their dream of making world-class pickles. It's just a statement, uh, hopefully you never had a pickle that tastes like ours. Uh, I don't know, I would never have a mission statement. Uh, my name is Joe McClure, I'm with McClure's Pickles, and hopefully uh, this is the best pickle you've ever had and you won't go to another pickle after trying ours. I've been eating McClure's pickles for a while now, and it's kind of a dream of mine to be able to pack a jar myself and know that, that I put my stamp on that and it went on the shelf. Can you teach me? Absolutely. Let's get geared up. I believe... So, uh, we're, so we're cleaning jars down at one end, and we're, uh, we're filling them with uh, garlic, dill, and hot peppers. We're doing a spicy batch today. OK. One, one pepper. There you go, five. I like a lot of garlic, so I'm going to throw five in there. Okay. And uh, you have most, most people uh, packing pickles, since that's like that's the kind of the bottleneck in our operation, is how fast you can pack these pickles, right? So do you pack as many as will fit? What a beautiful jar. You're hired. <laughs> and then you have two guys down at the end uh, filling and capping them. Woo, oh, that is... Lit. That is pungent, man. That is some strong stuff. I think the, the production would slow down if I was doing this right now, wouldn't it? It's just a nice... Nice snug. and snug, and that's it. Everything is being hand-shuffled right now, so there aren't a lot of conveyors that are moving and filling and capping. Like I said, it's simple, but sometimes simple is the best answer, you know? Your first real batch, thinking back at your first batch, how did that come about? Yeah, the first batch, uh, I mean, a lot of it was self-funded. We didn't have a whole lot of funding. To build this place out, we took a $50,000 loan out uh, against my parents' home. Joe had alluded to the fact that you guys refied your house and gave them 50 grand to start? Yes, yes. We told them that if they didn't succeed, we would move in with them for the rest of their lives, and that would be their punishment. <laughs> so it worked awesome. that way, yes. It's actually my great-grandmother, my grandmother's recipe, the boy's great-grandmother. What, was that always something that you just enjoyed? Were you forced to do it? Like, how, how did this come about? We were for kind you? of forced to do it. Uh, okay. It was, uh, you know, it was just something uh, that we grew up doing. Every August, we had to go down to the market. My grandpa and my father woke us up real early. We just we spent the whole day in the kitchen, uh, just one day. Uh, it took me one day in the summer, uh, and we did it every year. Every family almost has something like that, you know, whether yeah. it's a, a pickle recipe like ours or uh, sweet potatoes or biscuits or something like that. Someone's got something that they do with their family every year. Ours just happen to be pickles, and we just happen to take it to a business. Well, they brought it to us and said, we want you to help us start a company. And they said, will you finance us and work for us for free? And we kind of looked at them and said, well, <laughs> We believe what a great in, deal. Yes, we believe in you guys. We know what you can do. We know you can succeed, so we did. This is essentially our warehouse. This is where finished goods are. Okay. Um, so we'll have uh, all our finished uh, packed up 
pickles, Bloody Mary mix, uh, potato chips as well, which cool. we co-pack here with Better Made. These are responsible for the last 10 pounds I gained, by yeah, the way. Nice. <laughs> so uh, this, is, this is always in a flux. Uh, most of this product will be all gone by today. Uh, this will be all, all sent out of here. Will be gone by yep. There has been a dramatic uptick in the demand for fresh, organic food. Since 1990, the growth of the U.S. organics industry has exploded in revenue from $1 billion to $26.7 billion. We were always selling pickles uh, at the farmer's markets, and we sampled uh, tomato juice mixed with the pickle brine. Mm -hmm. So essentially you have a, a pickle brine Bloody Mary mix, right? Yep. Um, so people kept coming, coming around and saying, well, why don't you guys just bottle that? Uh, we said, all right, that's what we'll do. So we started bottling it, and it's one of our best sellers now. Mm -hmm. it, this also branched us out into a whole other industry, though, the liquor industry. So now we're teaming up with tequila companies, vodka companies, you gin sell companies, the bars and selling everything. the bars, restaurants, uh, wow. even just your corner liquor store. How much product are you going through? Cucumbers, dill, garlic, all of that, roughly? About 40, uh, 40 crates, which is a okay. bushel and ninth, and there's about two to 300 cucumbers per bushel, so you're looking at... Uh, eight, 9,000 Yeah, eight to 10,000 cucumbers a day, yeah. How, how far did that first run of, of capital get you? On your feet and in, in a business? Yeah, 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 it got us here. We haven't taken out any more until we started moving into this place. Wow. Yeah. So this is our new, um, this is our new pickle production plant. Uh, okay. We're moving out of that place that you saw earlier and moving into this place. It used to be an old American axle plant where they used to uh, strip down the cars, uh, pull them apart, calibrate them, uh, okay. and then send them off. And now it's going to be a pickle, uh, pickle production facility. Wow. At what point should a business expand? And at what point did you decide to expand? Yeah, I can't store anything more. I, can't, right. I couldn't even add another kettle. I'm, 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 pulling, I'm pulling every bit of electrical juice that I can possibly pull unless I put a whole other transformer outside. So flat out, are you guys profitable yet? Yeah, we're profitable. The yep. okay. uh, first couple years we weren't, and then we started turning a profit in our third year. Third um, year? A small profit, but then you know, gradually grew year after year. So if you had a business philosophy uh, what would it be for McClure's Pickles? So the ultimate philosophy is you have to stand behind your products. You know, everything you make, um, you got to believe in yourself, and then hopefully other people will believe in it as well. It's clear after talking to Joe that taking out another loan to grow the operation is simply a necessary risk. I checked in with him a few months later, and after they settled into their 25,000 square foot space, I was amazed at what I'd found. The additional space provided rooms for automation, more rooms for cucumbers, jars and ingredients, and room to hire additional employees. Indeed, their gamble to triple their operating space did pay off. Within weeks of the expansion, they received their first order from retail giant Whole Foods, and they begun to fill orders for restaurants looking to carry the McClure's line, an unanticipated additional revenue stream. I mean, you, you take it step by step, you know. Uh, um, it wasn't overnight. Um, case by case, uh, order by order. You know, we, we wanted a, a long path, a long road of sustained mm -hmm. growth, and that's what we're trying to achieve. Cool. Well, thanks again for bringing us back. From the kitchen table to this, a full-blown warehouse in downtown Detroit, the McClure brothers really know what they're doing when it comes to pickles and business. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for McClure's Pickles. What, what, uh, what do you call organic food? What did they call organic food in 1950? No idea. Food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. American Express is proud to support startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. The entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. In Walsh College's business launch entrepreneurial community, consultants provide advice to aspiring business starters. More information available online.